Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage the governor of the state of Michigan, Rick Snyder, president of Archer Corporate Services and chair of the 2016 Mackinac Policy Conference, Dennis Archer Jr. And president and chief executive officer of the Detroit Regional Chamber, Sandy Barua. Thank you. Sandy, wow. are, you, are you the Trump supporter that Devin was looking for? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I, I shouldn't talk out of school, but you know, when uh, Devin and I have talked about this, uh, he has a hard time getting Trump supporters to, to be on the show and, you know, and talk about it. But, but he's right. I mean, clearly they're out there. I mean, look at, look at you know, Trump's polling. Governor, you have a thought on the 2016 presidential race? You want to follow this panel? <laughs> Well, I'm going to stick to where I'm at. I'm happy to be governor of Michigan, and I'm sticking to Michigan issues. So the presidential election will draw a lot of attention, but let's make sure we're moving forward in this state and being a role model for a better way to do political affairs. So how do you think we're doing as a state? You know, one of the things that you have really focused on in your time in office is being one Michigan. You talked about it uh, uh, during your stage presentation yesterday. How are we doing becoming one Michigan? We're getting better all the time, but it's something that has to grow and has to be incorporated into our very fabric of who we are. Um, if you looked at it, the last decade was an illustration of a fractured Michigan. And you don't create something like this overnight. And so I think we've seen continuing positive steps with one of the best steps that I hope everyone recognizes being the grand bargain. That was truly a case where everyone came together. And what I would say is, is as you move forward from that, you have success, but you also have things that challenge that, that can cause you to take a step back. So it's not a direct line from A to B. Um, and the real question is, is how do you respond when you have one of those setback moments? And you find differences still happening. And again, some of the discussion around Detroit education could be something that people view as one of those things, that people are talking all about the areas of difference, when one of the things I've been trying to point out to people as I talk through it is, is there are differences. And I'm on one side of that, and there are other people on the other side, but <clears throat> let's not forget the fact that we're talking about addressing the historic debt of the district, about doing a locally elected school board, that just two years ago, a lot of people didn't think those things would even be on the table, nor possible. Right. And so let's not just focus on the negative, let's actually give ourselves credit I think for some huge positives and say this is another step forward and let's just keep going. I agree, I think that uh, there's been a theme that has resonated throughout the past few days, which is everyone I believe agrees that Detroit, the region and the state is moving generally in a positive direction and everybody accepts the fact that um, the the tides are rising, all ships are not rising at right now collectively, but to your point, I think everyone is moving towards that one Michigan. And I would agree that you know, historically that has not been the case. And there uh, are several cases, um, you know, how people rallied around a solution for public schools in Detroit. Uh, the Grand Bargain um, is probably the best example, um, Governor, in terms of particularly in Detroit, and then with the outstate and Lansing support, how the philanthropic community, the business community, and the civic and political leadership all came together to march forward uh, in lockstep. And I think as a state, uh, there's evidence of us doing that as well. Yeah, another great illustration at this conference to show it's still evolving, but we should be really proud of the positive step forward is the whole RTA discussion. Mm -hmm. The Regional Transit Authority, because if you go back Only to this... Only 25 years. Well, again, if you go yeah. back to this conference, it actually harkens back right. to uh, the conference in earlier days. Right. In fact, I, mean, in fact, I think the, almost the first time I met you, because I was brand new to Michigan, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Governor, and we were talking about this conference, the Governor said, yeah, the Mackinac Conference, is that the one that you always talk about transit every year? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm glad you shared that story, because that's the illustration. Yeah. This, yeah, was, absolutely. this was like Transit Central. And it was the same discussion year after year for how many decades? And so I got, I was very proud that in the legislature, we were all worked together in Lansing to pass the enabling legislation yeah. for the RTA. Right. 
And that was a huge step forward addressing a problem of decades. And now that was just one milestone. Now we're at the next milestone to say, now we need the vote of the public. And I'm a big supporter of that. I actually told people, I said, I may be viewed as governor, so I don't have a stake in it because I'm not in the region, but actually I live in Washtenaw County and I'm happy to pay my fair share. Let's get this done. That's right. <laughs> So, Governor, I'm going to ask you another political question. I want to go back to this because, you know, after listening to, uh, and I, I hope you guys all loved uh, uh, the Devin Scullion panel as much as I did. I thought that was absolutely terrific. Wasn't that great? And, uh, but, you know, I'm listening to the conversation about, you know, how polarized our country is. And if you caught Ron Fournier yesterday, too, I mean, I thought that was just an amazing perspective. But I look at, you know, where the country is and how people are voting. And, and who they're p potentially electing, especially if it's Donald Trump or Bernie Sanders, you are like the anti-Donald <laughs> Trump, right? Uh, in terms of how you approach things, you know, uh, your, your, your levelness, your, uh, I mean, Donald Trump calls people a name, a names at a drop of a hat. You've never called anybody anything, you know? Um, uh, potentially maybe late for dinner, I don't know. But is your model replicable elsewhere? I mean, you are a unique leader in, in an extraordinary time in our nation when you think about it. Is that, how is it replicable? In this environment today. In this environment, that's, what, I'm, yeah, that's, what, that's right. what I meant to say. Yeah. yeah, well, I view it as something that, this is who I am, first of all, and I appreciate the very kind words. Sandy. The, the second thing, though, is I think there should be a different standard for how people act whether in public office and public service. Um, I work for everyone. Everyone is, should be treated with respect. Um, I appreciate that I work with people that don't have the same views I do, but we're Michiganders. We're Americans. So shouldn't we be trying to treat one another with respect? And that's just the fundamentals that we need to get to. And to be open with you, I hope I'm somewhat of a role model for someone at some point. And I view it as something that is the pendulum has to swing at some point. And that's been one of the messages I have talked about, that this fighting and blame situation is not good for our country. Yeah. We are the greatest country in the world. You can't sustain that long term if your leadership and as a people we don't respect one another, and we don't solve problems together. It doesn't work. And so the question is, is how big a crisis are we going to let this become before there's a movement back to understanding we're in this together? Right. And so it's got to happen at some point. And to be open with you, I'm not going to wait. I want to be a role model now for it. And I hope more people view this as the way it should be. And I encourage people to look at public service, even with the challenges, right. <laughs> um, and that we move forward and do this. And this is where this conference is a great illustration because, and I want to thank both of you for your great work doing this conference, because as I said before, this is not a, a conference of problems. This is a conference of solutions. It's that same attitude. Right. When you talk about pe young people going into public service, again, hearkening back to Ron Fournier's uh, uh, keynote yesterday, uh, he tells a story about spending time at the Kennedy School uh, at Harvard, and he said the entire time he was there, he did not run into one graduate student at the Kennedy School for government that was planning to go into government. We, we need to do a better job and focus. I mean, you talk about um, a forthcoming elected school board, um, we really need to pay attention about um, drafting, recruiting, grooming um, the next generation of elected officials. Um, because a lot of the jobs, unfortunately, are thankless. Many of them, like the school board, are not paid. Um, but nonetheless, we need to ensure that we have capable, experienced, committed uh, folks who fill those slots. Um, so that we don't take all of the effort, time, and literally blood, sweat, and tears that many of you have put into getting us to a point where we can uh, write the balance sheet and run it locally again, that we don't go backwards another time, because we can't afford that to happen. Yeah, and let me just emphasize, Dennis, you're making a, a 
critically important point, and I'll go back tying into the Detroit education package. All, much of the discussion here has all been about the legislative package. And a lot of people are sort of viewing it, is it gonna get done or not? And clearly it's gotta get done, but it's just another milestone. It's a critical milestone to move it to the next level. But right after that, the next critical milestone would be electing the best board possible. Right. And finding the best candidates. And if you look at the change in Detroit, it's because we have seen enhancements in terms of people wanting to do public service. That's right. Um, look at the mayor of the city council. And we need to see that in the, the school board. And then the next milestone after that is that school board then going and finding the best superintendent in the right. country. And if you step back and when the history all gets written on hopefully a very successful Detroit public schools and an education system in Detroit, they're gonna go back and say, well, it's because of the superintendent or this board or this group of people doing that. Right. So that's where people have to realize that what we're talking about in this conference about the legislation is critically important. But let's not forget, we need to be ready and hopefully we're gonna get excited to shift into that next mode, and that's that leadership it's critical. So you said it very well. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's getting ready for us to, to wrap this up. Uh, we've got a few little things that uh, we wanna do with you before we take off. Uh, first of all, I wanna thank uh, our incredible sponsors, uh, all 54 of them, uh, who have made this uh, event possible. Uh, certainly, first and foremost, uh, our incredible friends at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. Uh, Dan Lepp, in particular, uh, incredible leader, has been so supportive of the chamber in, in so many things. Uh, our platinum sponsors, and we've, I think we have a record number of platinum sponsors uh, this year, uh, AT&T, uh, Bank of America, Consumers Energy, Huntington Bank, the M Live Media Group, Opportunity Detroit and Quicken Loans, and it was great to have Dan Gilbert here this year for the first time in, uh, in quite some time. Uh, PNC Bank, UPS, and the WK Kellogg Foundation. So please thank our sponsors very much for everything, everything they've, they've done for us. Sandy, you know, piggybacking on the, the generosity of the sponsorship community this year, uh, the attendees, have done a phenomenal job. You're, you're aware uh, through the app and at the, um, the booth outside, we are taking donations uh, for the city of Flint and for Dr. Mona's fund. And I'm very happy to announce that in that effort, we've raised $123,910 towards that, which will be matched dollar for dollar by the Mott Foundation. So thanks uh, to all of you who donated. Uh, that money's gonna be put to good use. We appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I get to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart, Pure Michigan. Um, and I appreciate the, the, the Chamber for being proactive and being creative to do a social media um, voting situation, to actually review those ads, um, because they're great ads. I mean, the, you, you gotta winning. feel good after you watch Pure Michigan ads. Um, and so I appreciate both the people here and people at home going through social media to vote for their favorite. Um, and we have a winner. Um, which is exciting because this was a new theme this year and it's the story of Detroit. So I think we'd like to show that. I think we have the, uh, the video roll. So you're gonna feel good in just a minute. Everyone loves a great story. Whether it's the classics we grew up with or the ones handed down through history. But what about the comeback stories where what's new meets what's next and why meets why not? Let's dive into the latest chapter of Detroit and the unmistakable vibe of pure Michigan. Your trip begins at Michigan.org. And Governor, we want to congratulate you on the 10th anniversary of the Pure Michigan campaign. So thank you. It's a, the award-winning Pure Michigan campaign is the 10th anniversary. And um, it was actually launched here at the Mackinac Policy Conference 10 years ago, so. No, it's been great, and we're, we're gonna keep it going, and that's exciting stuff. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and finally, uh, folks, uh, as you know, uh, for uh, the seventh year now, uh, we have a to-do list. 
uh, coming out of the conference. The to-do to list was started actually in 20, uh, 2011, 2010. Uh, Barbara Alashewski is actually was our chair, and uh, I was brand new to Michigan. And uh, we created this to-do list, a tradition that we have uh, kept ever since, and it has helped us um, really uh, keep us accountable so we ensure that the conversations that take place on this island uh, don't just stay on this island, but actually have actionable steps uh, afterwards. And also that's why we have our partnership with Detroit Public Television, that's why we broadcast everything from this stage, and that's why we really lift the veil off this conference. But the to-do list really helps us um, uh, hold ourselves accountable. So um, we've got four items on this year's list, and I'm going to Turn to Dennis for the first one. Yes, Andy, so throughout this conference, uh, there's been a significant amount of discussion in the area of uh, the automobile industry, its future. We're talking about autonomous vehicles and mobility. Um, you couple that with the phenomenal work that Glenn has done with the Mish Auto Project and bringing Matt Simoncini in to help uh, push uh, some of the senior leaders in that industry to come up here and join us this year. So we felt that- More, it would, auto, uh, no, more, more automotive, CEO participation at the conference this year than any ever. time and yeah, probably ever. It's fantastic. And so coming off of that, uh, we're going to support the establishment of the American Center for Mobility at Willow Run. So we're very happy to work with them. Uh, it's right in line with uh, what we're doing as a chamber and supporting the automobile industry. Great. Thank you. <laughs> uh, our next one is actually very consistent with that goal. We heard a lot uh, about the importance of Michigan's defense industry and how we need to protect and grow that asset. Uh, it is an incredible jobs generator. It's an incredible innovation generator uh, for our state. Uh, but we also recognize that uh, there are other states uh, that want those assets. And well, we don't want them to have it. We want, we want, we want to keep them. So our second to-do item is to uh, help the state of Michigan uh, develop and execute a strategy to protect and grow our valuable defense assets. That's great. Very important to me, and I hope it played out well uh, throughout the conference, is the whole notion of uh, being inclusive. And as we talk about uh, the city of Detroit, the region, and the state evolving, coming back, um, surging, uh, it's important that everybody participate. And so in that regard, um, we're going to continue to support an economically inclusive Detroit by promoting educational access, uh, options, and attainment, as well as to continue to promote financial li literacy and exposure to entrepreneurship. And so you'll see the chamber getting involved in a number of initiatives in the coming months uh, to support that to do. And finally, uh, we heard a lot about infrastructure issues. Uh, obviously, most importantly, uh, highlighted by uh, what's, uh, what has happened in Flint and what we need to do as a state uh, to, uh, to, to resolve the issues in Flint. And I know the governor is completely committed to that. It was great to have uh, Mayor Karen Weaver uh, on this stage, uh, along with Congressman Kildee. Uh, so infrastructure continues to be a huge issue uh, in, our, in our state. We made some progress on roads. Uh, last year, which is good, but we've got a lot more to do. And so our final to-do item is to, ad, uh, is to continue to advocate for, uh, a ro for robust infrastructure investment and our basic utilities and assets. Uh, these are our basic uh, utilities, you know, pipes underground, our electricity grid, uh, transportation systems, uh, these basic things that oftentimes are not very sexy, uh, but absolutely critical uh, to our economy functioning efficiently, our people being able to move around efficiently and safely, uh, and to build uh, the next generation of, of investment opportunities in the state of Michigan. We've, in, we've neglected our infrastructure for far too long in our country and in our state, and we need to start turning it around, and we appreciate the governor, uh, you establishing the infrastructure uh, task force and bank uh, to, to focus on these issues, uh, because we need, we need, a, we need a action on infrastructure. Yeah, well, well, thank you for this list. I mean, we've worked on this list in prior years, yeah. Sandy, so I always appreciate it. And Dennis, thanks for coming up with a good list of action items. Uh, you gave me some assignments here, I see that, and that's good, because <laughs> that's the way it should be. Um, so hopefully we can show a lot of accomplishment, so when we come back next year, we can check those boxes. I look forward to it. So I really do appreciate that. 
And I just want to thank everyone for this conference, but I think it'd be great. We should give a shout out to Dennis, to Sandy, to all the chamber staff, though, for all your all great work to make this happen. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you. And, and in fact, if I could just pause you just for a second, Governor. You know, I, 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 you know, people come up to Dennis and I all the time and, and thank us and you know, congratulate us, and, and that's great, and we appreciate that. Uh, but all the work that, that occurs to put this conference on happens behind the scenes. Uh, the people that you don't see, um, you know, Wendy and Bev in the back, Tammy and Megan and Jim and you know, Brad and every, everyone else, uh, you know, the 83 people of the Detroit Regional Chamber staff, they put this on. Dennis and I just take the credit for it. So. <laughs> No, no, that's why I want to make sure we thank yeah. all the staff and look at this display. I mean, this is like, this is quite an operation. And if you saw behind the scenes, it's incredible. So it's great to see continuous improvement and just making the conference better and better. I'd also like to give a shout out and thank you to the, the Grand Hotel and the people on Mackinac Island. They've been wonderful hosts for us as they do every year. So we should thank them for their great efforts. And they've done new wonderful things. Actually, I want to thank uh, Dan Musser. He has done better marketing this year on me in the sense that he actually had a nice sheet set aside to actually show the, the economic impact of the island <laughs> in terms of the thousands of people, not employed just here, but across the island. And again, pure Michigan. Mm -hmm. What an important piece of our economy it is, in addition to be one of the world's most beautiful places. So it's been great to have this conference. Again, thank you for being proactive, for addressing issues such as Flint, education. These are the topics that are critically important that we follow through. That's right. And work on it. So this has been great teamwork. This has been a session of solutions. This has been a positive act activity to talk about Michigan's future. And we do have a unique opportunity here. So I would reinforce that. We are writing the book for the next decades for the foundation for all of us and our kids and our kids' kids and their kids. So thank you for being here. Um, and thank you for continuing this dialogue when we return to our homes, because it's a living thing. So I wish you safe travels home um, and take good memories from here and good action items. Good action Because this items. is a conference of action, not just talk. That's right. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.